Hi, this is Taryn Lupo. Welcome to Low Country Liberty Report, special holiday edition. It's just about Christmas time, and I'm going to tell you actually a personal story that most people do not know about me, including some of my friends I've known my whole life. I'm going to uh, talk to you about when I was a real, real tiny runt. We're talking in the 70s, the early 70s. I think I was between... I'm not positive on my age there. I think I was around five to six when this happened. But what I will tell you is uh, the 70s were kind of a different time when you were a kid. For y'all that are young and watching this, we had a lot of dangerous toys. We had things like uh, lawn darts. Someone thought that was a good idea. <laughs> Do you guys remember those things? And I can specifically remember me and my brother we had a um, a soldier making kit. So what this was was a hot cauldron that you threw in lead and you would heat lead until it boiled and then you would pour that into little casts of little British soldiers and Confederate soldiers. So you'd make your own soldiers out of hot lead. Now <laughs> that was completely unsupervised too. We would just sit there on the stove and cook lead. I kept forgot about that. But, there's a couple things wrong here. One, I guess we didn't really know lead was a problem back then, because um, the way I got the lead was my mom worked at a dental office, and back then, when you took the x-rays, you would get these little things called bite wings, and you'd stick them in your mouth, and you'd bite down, and part of the bite wing had lead, and it would shoot, and it would take an x-ray, and you know, it would be like a little lead back, and when they took the x-ray out, they threw the lead away. So, my mom would buy, bring like buckets of these things home, and we'd play with it. We'd play with the lead, you know. I thought it was neat to put it in your mouth and bite down on it, and it would make, like, a teeth mark in the lead. And we played with these lead soldiers constantly, and, you know. <laughs> so we constantly played with lead all day, and it probably explains why my brain's so messed up. But we also had a thing called Tinker Toys, and they were basically sharpened sticks that you would link together into... Uh, yeah, you make like little trains out of them or cars for you guys that don't know what that is. Yes, take a look. Uh, brought to you by the Kali Intermission. <laughs> Kali Intermission. What can you do? Don't get the blues, get Liberty News. At LCL Report, stash your swag or buy it out. It's still going on. What can you do? Put me back. So where were we? <laughs> okay. So we had all these unsafe toys, and the one particularly I'm talking about is the Tinker Toy. Basically, I was running around, it was obviously near Christmas time, but I was running around with a Tinker Toy in my mouth. I guess uh, I was imitating smoking a cigarette, I was told. Because, you know, when you're that young, you don't really remember a whole lot, but you kind of get pieces. And I definitely remember some of these pieces. So I'm running around, and, you know, this Tinker Toy is probably... I don't know, about eight inches, and my brother trips me. The Tinker Toy goes through the roof of my mouth and out my temple. Now, what happened was, you could actually see it. It didn't go all the way out of the temple, but you see it in the temple. And my parents freaked the hell out, obviously, when, when they saw this, and they rushed me to the hospital. Well, I don't know a whole lot about surgery back in the 70s, but for some reason, I did know that because I had recently eaten and because I was tiny, they couldn't use anesthesia, so they had to put me in a straitjacket, strap me down, and work on this thing. And it was just like the luckiest shot on the planet, because had the Tinker Toy gone just a little, like an eighth of an inch over, it would have gone in the ear canal and destroyed my hearing, or it would have gone eighth inch up, it would have made me blind. And if it had gone about a quarter inch back, it would have pierced the brain and it would have been done. 
So I got very lucky in that sense. It was kind of like the magic shot. But the flip side is it causes a lot of nerve damage to my face, which I've never really recovered from. I've gotten close, and like 90% of the time it's fine. But it really comes out when I'm tired or stressed or drunk. You know, one side of my face will just kind of droop like it has palsy. Um, if you watch a lot of time, I know some of the, the viewers comment that my blinking's off, you know, that my eyes kind of do separate things. That's kind of why, is there's a lot of old residual nerve damage. Now, the Christmas miracle part of this is that nerve damage isn't as always a sentence that you always hear. I'm going to share a dirty secret with you that doctors hate to tell you this, but in school and on the job, you learn to always, always, always give someone the worst case scenario. It covers your butt legally. So if a patient comes in and they have horrible nerve damage or you're not sure, or even if it's a little nerve damage, you always tell them the worst case scenario. You know, you'll never get better. You're going to have to live with this the rest of your life. It could get worse. You know, nothing could ever change. You, you lay out the most morbid, terrible scenario. That way, it covers your ass because you didn't get the patient false hope in case nothing does happen. And secondly, if the patient does get better, you look like some sort of miracle worker. So it's a trick doctors use all the time. The problem is a lot of people buy into that. I've had some very uh, personal experiences with brain damage and nerve damage and I worked with a lot of people who are actually uh, damaged as well by either I worked at a clinic full of kids with polio damaged by vaccines, I've worked with um, people who were paralyzed, you know, people who just have horrible nerve damage from accidents and one thing's always kind of consistent. The nerves the research is so mixed on this, but it does show that nerves will grow back in certain areas if the nerves are close enough. But what's kind of glazed over that people forget about is nerves reroute. Your body adapts. Um, other areas of the brain will take over functions that they're not really supposed to, and you can adapt. I've had some very personal experience with people with brain damage where they work their butt off in recovery and within you know two years they're 95 percent of what they were which is technically not supposed to happen when you have nerve damage so what I'm really trying to get across to you is don't listen to your damn doctors um, if you really rehab hard there's a good chance that your body will reroute recover in my own personal experience when I was a kid uh, the damage was so severe that only one side of the face would work. So if I'd smile or talk, it would just be on one side. And of course, you know, little kids are ruthless, so they would tease you to death. And they didn't realize what it was. I remember actually getting teased by my teachers in, in uh, elementary school. And then when they found out, they felt really bad. But what the solution was for me is they put me in band, where you had to tighten your lips and blow a horn. And that kind of rehab every single day really helped. Now, my smile is still not perfect. You'll see it crooked on one side all the time. But it, that sort of music rehab seemed to help a lot. So I think you have to find the rehab and think outside the box that works for you. Because if you're not going to really do a rehab you enjoy, it's just work and painful and annoying. So that's my advice. Don't believe what your doctor says. There is hope for nerve damage. And uh, find something you enjoy that challenges it and rehab it that way. It's a lot more fun than just doing exercise. As always, this is Taryn Lupo. Good hunting. Don't give up. Stay in there. And uh, oh, Merry Christmas. Happy Holiday. Kwanzaa. Odie Day. Whatever your thing is. All right. Be seeing you. Mark Edge with Free Talk Live. You can see us at Free Talk Live.